Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mr. N Jersey and this is your best place to find all your Stormworks related content. From weekly updates to build series to the best workshop creations and much more. Now in this video we are back with the fifth episode of Fix Your Creations. In the series you submit your broken creations and I take a look at them and see if they've been fixed and saved. Now if you are looking at getting your own creations fixed just see the description of this video for more information on where you can submit them but before we get started if you are enjoying these videos hit that like and subscribe button and don't forget the little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted and while you're watching let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in any of my future videos so with that all said let's get straight into it and get started with this video so the first submission that we're going to be taking a look at was submitted by Davy Man. now they say that the issue they're having is that the engine pretty much just dies and cuts out as soon as they enable the clutch um so let's jump in it and let's see so we got a door here at the back so let's get that closed okay and then let's jump here what do we have we have a clutch starter left right lights locator okay let's get some throttle starter on okay so i can hear the engine is pushing along just hear it ticking away in the background there's a little bit of exhaust let's get the clutch off okay and it instantly dies hmm okay uh let's bring this back and let's just see what's going on inside here so got your your tracks that's fine engine you have coolant there you have what is this down here here. what is that is that air what that's ex is that exhaust or air possibly is air i think yeah that looks like air okay um that is slightly worrying that's you have that long of a way to go for the air what i would probably do is just switch this out there for now just to make sure that isn't an issue because i can't obviously diagnose this engine because i can't see it so you've got your coolant you've got your fuel which looks like this whole area here is actually a fuel tank uh where does this pipe go so this goes this goes that's exhaust yeah okay so that is your exhaust goes out either end where's your fuel fuel's just there okay so it's literally just a yeah okay and you're spawning in fuel here diesel yep that's correct um gearboxes you have quite a few gearboxes you got one two three four four gearboxes okay i would probably bring that down to a one to one ratio to start with um if it's cutting out that much let's get the rps up to about 40 rps uh just to make sure that that engine actually has enough power to it uh cool let's spawn that in so we've changed a few things around not much to see if that makes any difference whatsoever otherwise your issue is that you just don't have enough power with that engine uh starter on yeah now i can see some exhaust going let's get that clutch on okay so it's just once again it's gone and killed your engine so i'm actually going to go and just go and connect up your up and down from your seat to your clutch that way i can actually manually adjust your your clutch pressure if i want to so up and down put it on sticky 10 percent's fine great let's spawn that in again and let's see if that with our manual control the clutch is going to actually work better let's start it on and let's go and use our up and down of our keyboard that looks a little better seems like it's still trying to kill you can see there it's just it's killing the engine as we get the power going so my thought is once now obviously we've diagnosed it i'm thinking your engine is not powerful enough you need a bigger engine uh probably two engines in there would probably do um 
Another thing I have also found is sometimes if you remove some of these, so I'm just going to enable your symmetry. If you get rid of some of those, it sometimes works better. So you can see I've just removed some on that side and some on that side. And let's just see if we get any more success from that. So open that, start it on, roll it up. And then it's just like up and down here to control it. Yep. Okay, it killed it again. So I'm just going to actually spawn it in so it's straight this time. So I'm just going to lower it down. Uh, let's spawn it in now so it doesn't flop around. So I can actually go straight here. I'll probably change your turning buttons. To be honest, I'll use clutches for them for turning. That's just my opinion. But I'll leave that up to you uh, to fix. So starter on. Let's get our clutch. Slowly engage it. Okay, it is dying. So you can see there's too much pressure on that poor engine. It can't really keep up. It's trying, but it's just... Yeah, it's doing better than what it did earlier, but it's still dying. So your engine, you need a power, more powerful engine there. Um, if you were to go like, and we can test that by just using, let's just use some electric engines quickly just to boost the power up a bit. Uh, and then I'll leave that to you to obviously add in some bigger engines. So let's go before, I don't know, let's do, let's disable your symmetry here, come here. And then let's put two T pieces there and uh, let's check that and another T piece there. And then we'll grab your engines or motors, sorry, small ones, put one there and one there. Where's your battery? Do you, how many batteries do you have? You only have one battery. So I would probably add a few more just to just for our testing purposes right now just to make sure it's got enough power so yep connect that up okay connect that connect that connect that to our two little small motors and let's get our throttle on that too also if you use electric motors it's pretty cool because then you don't have to use um, a starter on your engine um, so that does help but uh, make sure then obviously you have some way of recharging those engines or Personally, I would just put an aircraft engine in here instead. So if we do throttle now. Yep. Get our clutch. Yeah. So you can see it does work. Um, I said I would fix your, your steering, to be honest. I actually have a tutorial on how to set up a track steering. Um, definitely go check it out if you're looking at obviously changing this. Um, but yeah, you need a bigger engine. That one baby small little diesel engine can't can't cope with this with the amount of fuel you have and the amount of weight and also the amount of tracks that you have. Um, I guess, you know, if we were to remove some of this stuff, we could probably get it to work. Um, but yeah, you need a you need a bigger engine with this. And the next question we're looking at was submitted by Fox Fuzzle, if I'm correct. And pretty much, this is actually looks really cool. I like it, really nice and small and compact. Um, he says, or she says that the issue they having is that it slowly turns to the left or right when they're trying to go straight. So we'll have a look at that and see what's going on. Just having a look at actually kind of understanding how you got this working. You've got baby tracks in here. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks like it's, is that diesel powered? I don't know, or if it's electric. Let's just go and open these hatches. That one's locked. And this one's got a driver's seat. It's pretty cool. Oh, you got a big engine in here. Wow, okay. Um, you got unlocks, locks. You got some equipment back here, some extra seating, more equipment. Uh, looks like a key button. Let's get that on. Okay, that works. So, that looks fine. Okay. Oh, yeah. I can see now it's turning. Okay. Yeah. It's it's definitely turning to the left there. I can see that. Um. Okay. Hmm. Cabin drain. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It's pretty cool creation. I like it. It's really small. Um. Very interesting, actually. Um. So yeah. So let's have a look. I think it's something to do with your power of your engine that's coming out. Something's going weird with some clutches or something. Um. So let's bring it back to the workbench. Let's understand what is going on in here. This is gonna be fun. Um. 
so we have your engine and uh, where is so you have all your exhaust and things you have your that air it is you're getting air from inside your cabin that's fine I guess I don't know I guess we'll soon find out um oh okay no it actually gets air from the top okay that's fine that's done why you have that exhaust there maybe just for deco um and your power is coming out of here going down and going into huh what is it's going into nothing so that 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 could because that is not that's just a jet part okay so it's just going into this one clutch okay and then it's coming up and it goes down again and it goes into two gearboxes both of them facing towards that's fine and this one comes out and one way goes into a generator the other way goes into down all the way down here down he yeah yeah down here and then goes cross and then into the back yeah goes here then goes there okay this is a very complex way of doing it okay that's fine uh so it goes all the way to the back there where you have your one you have another one over there so i'm guessing it actually goes to both of those um let's have a look here so it's very hard to see inside of creations guys so yeah okay i understand what you're going so you got Rotors on either side. Let's just first double check your gearboxes are the same speed. Yeah, three to one, three to one. You clutch. Okay, I understand your clutch. Your, where is your clutch, by the way? It's somewhere over here. What is controlling your clutch? How are you actually steering is my question. Same as that you got two gearboxes and one clutch. That's actually quite interesting. Um, constant number which is going to your clutch okay so it's not actually enabling it fully that could also be an issue um but how are you doing your steering is uh wait no how are you doing your steering if you have where's your a and d that's ws and then you have up down then you have ad which goes to those two and then this goes to a a or B and this one goes to a A or B and then it goes to what gearbox oh okay so using gearbox to so you're putting in a reverse so if you want to change if you want to change direction you're putting in reverse um that I wouldn't I personally wouldn't do that um it is one way of doing it but it's messing up your engine like if you're not in engaging your clutch back again then it's yeah it's not it's not clean at all um what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to disconnect these on offs and i just want to see if it runs straight without modifying the left and right okay because then that we know that's the issue personally i would use clutches guys use clutches to turn with tracked vehicles as i said i've got a tutorial on how to do that if you want to watch it go check it out it's pretty straightforward okay this is still turning which then tells me that some power distribution it's how it's sending its power out to the two different tracks there's something wrong with it there um okay so what we can do is let's go back in I want to change your clutch to one just to give it full clutch so it's not actually giving you half clutch there so let's change that to one see if that makes any difference uh where am i oh, i'm in the wrong seat okay engine on Ooh.
Wow, that's got loads of power. Okay, um, where's your gearboxes? So what have you got on this gearbox? Three to one, three to one. Let's bring that down to a one to one and a one to one. We've got way too much power coming out of that engine. Maximum power. Actually, yeah, you could just bring that down and bring the maximum power down to about 40%. We can put that back to a three to one and this one back to a three to one. You can always reduce the power of the engine if you've got too much like that. Uh, you don't need to mess around with half clutch. Personally, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, let's go and... So that seems like it's just killing the engine instantly. Yeah, it's actually not turning on, so... Hmm, that's got a 3 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 1. So maybe the clutch at 0 0.5 is needed. The way you've got, I don't know how you've got this engine set up, so... And reduce this down to let's do 20% and let's do a one to one on your gearboxes now. Okay, let's see how 20% on that aircraft engine works. And let's open the door up, let's get into the driver's seat. Yeah, okay, so it's just killing it. That's interesting. Okay. So let's go and load up the creation from scratch again so we can just work from that. So everything else was fine to start with and we looked at the clutch that wasn't really, uh, I, I said I don't know how your engine's set up so and how you're controlling its throttle. Um, so the next thing I would probably go down to because I don't want to put new clutches and mess around with your whole system here is possibly get rid of these here at the back so delete that delete that put this back put this back get one of these and put that in there instead get one of those put it there instead actually just invert it quickly there we go uh that should be fine now so yep so you only got your actual Drivetrain at the front now. Let's see how that works in comparison. So in the seat again, let's get it on. Yep, there we go. I'm actually thinking, actually, I think I know exactly what was wrong with your creation. You didn't invert one of your, you possibly didn't invert, invert it so it got put the wrong way, but you can see that's running perfectly straight now. I just want to double check that. So let's go back to your creation. Facing forward, facing forward. Oh, facing forward, yeah. You got it all in the right direction. So yeah, it just didn't like just didn't like having two of them. So yeah, that's a nice one. Uh, nice nice solve there. Uh, as I said, f uh, put clutches, guys, for turning. It's much cleaner, I think. Um, and then obviously the only fix for this was just actually getting rid of these. That's the only thing that fixed it is just removing those and just having one at the front. Uh, pretty much fixes the creation and it works absolutely perfectly. Uh, so nice easy one. Cool. Let's go and move on to the next creation. And the next creation we have is a creation submitted by Ashker. Now straight away he or she says that this is top heavy and um, I think we can all tell that it is top heavy because it is currently sinking. Um, and capsizing at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see how he or she has got the actual systems built into the weight wise or stabilization. But it's a really nice looking boat. It's actually, yeah, really, really good. Um, I love the different colors. The, it's got a beautiful design to it. The hull's really nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful creation. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go and try and understand what's going on with your weights here. So straight away, let's go and look. So yeah, your center of gravity is quite high. I would like it to be around there, but it's not too bad. Um, what have you got going on here? So this is all open. Uh, what is this on the deck here? Okay. Um, so this is all open. You've got a little bit of logic there. That's all a nice open, open space. You've got some fuel down here. And some fuel going down here. And some fuel going down there. Okay. Uh, you got your two large engines. 
Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you got a generator. And then what's this at the back? So then you just got your propeller at the back. Okay. What is in here? So that's all just once again, open space. Um, some more open space here that goes all the way to the top here. Okay. Uh, and then is there the same on the other side? No, it isn't. Okay. Um, so what I would, what is that for? Okay. So there's no purpose to that at all. Okay. Let's delete that and let's go and where do those uh, pipes go up there and then along there, along there. Okay. Interesting that you've got it there and then wait, hold on. Where does this go? That goes to the left. This goes to nothing. And then this carries on and goes along here and then he Okay, I don't really understand that too much in how because you've got nothing there. That's just absolutely nothing. Um, okay, and we need to get it there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and do that and grab that and pull that in. Okay, these pipes you don't need. And then these you can just literally just go like this and get them connected. So let's do that and that and then that one can go there and the same with this we can go there and let's go there and then we can come out from here so we'll go down one like that like that like that and like that and we'll just get them connected up now so we can just go across here like so we can bring this across here yeah, like that and let's get those two connected up to each other and we'll do the same with the rest of the rest of the air um i just want to seal that off because i'm thinking that might have something to do with your buoyancy but uh, i could be wrong to be fair um but i'd just like to eliminate any issue that you possibly could have so that's fine that's fine let's just do the same thing here let's get a corner piece there and a corner piece here and then we'll connect those up too. So we can just get that there, that there, and get that connected. Come on, there we go, pipe, thank you. And then we'll get the other one connected to just over there. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna connect that there, like so, and let's bring this one up like that. And get it connected okay so we've just changed the pipe around a little bit here and just close the section off so i don't have any extra buoyancy there uh weight wise seems like you got quite a lot of weight blocks underneath it um to try and fix your issue i just want to spawn that in now and just see if that had any difference by just changing that buoyancy ever so slightly okay so still quite top heavy um that's fine let's go and add a little bit more of weight blocks seems like you actually have quite a few um but let's just add a few more why not okay hopefully you don't have any hidden anywhere that i haven't been able to see and is this going to place it on both sides it is great and let's just go and increase this all the way through to there okay so we've added quite a few more weight blocks in there and that should have brought our center of gravity down quite a bit um yeah that looks better it's still flopping around a bit and kind of almost have an idea of what that possibly could be i just want to just see, see where your center of weight is um so if we go down seems pretty centered let's just bring this down here like that okay so it is to the left a little bit you can see that is a little bit to the left so i would probably go and add in some more weight blocks to the right hand side of your creation um like over here i would add that in just to get that more in the center if anything we add a few more yeah that should be fine uh, another thing also i have found sometimes this is once again just my thoughts is these antennas that does do cause sometimes cause a little bit of issue uh, i'm going to leave it there for now and we're just going to spawn this and just see how those extra weight blocks on the right hand side. Otherwise, this creation would be greatly suited for a active stabilization in it. Okay, it's still going way to the left. So let's get a bunch more weight blocks in there. Um, 
So yeah, you could use an active stabilization in the system inside here and that possibly could help you. Uh, let's just see if adding those weights in actually did anything. Yeah, it's still leaning way to the right. That also could be a fuel thing, um, but I don't think so. I'm just gonna delete this radio. Just, just see what happens. Okay, it's still tipping to the left. Not that much now. It's coming back to the right now. Yeah, so it still needs a little more weight on the right hand side. That is very unusual because I don't do you how much weight do you have on? Is there somewhere where you have a bunch of weight on this left hand side? It doesn't look like it because obviously if I look at your center of weight here, this looks so oh, actually uh, it's a little bit to the left is not probably what I want. Oh, uh, you know why I got symmetry on everyone's going to tell me in the comments and I need to get rid of the symmetry. That would fix it, wouldn't it? Yep, I fixed it. Probably get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit less weight on the side. Um, cool, that should be fine now. Yeah, so symmetry was my issue there, but yeah, a little bit more weight bucks on the right hand side. Just get your center of gravity down as low as you can, and also to the right as more as you can. As I said, this would be a perfect creation for your active stabilization systems. Um, I would love to put one in here, just with some rails and some weights. Uh, I think that would work almost perfectly, to be honest. Uh, that's just my opinion. You could obviously use a ballast system if you wanted to. Um, you guys let me know if you want to see a ballast system tutorial in the comments below. I have been thinking about doing one, um, a very high level, very basic one. Um, but yeah, you guys let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a ballast tutorial. Um, but if you want to do an active stabilization, just go check out one of my videos. I've got two, uh, one with weights and then what, obviously I've got a couple more with fins and things like that. So that will work but that is almost fine you can obviously play around with the weight blocks here uh, you can see I'm just adding and removing adding and removing until I got the weight correct um, so let's just add a few more to see how that works otherwise you need to really put a bunch more weights underneath the ship to get it to to not have that issue because you are quite top heavy to be fair yeah it's still tilting a little bit to the left now so we need some more weights on the right hand side and we're just going to keep on adding weights, adding weights, adding weights until this gets fixed. But active stabilization would be your key here. So yeah, that's almost perfect now. Leaning a little bit to the right, we removed like two weights, I think, or one weight. Um, but you, you, you ideally do want active stabilization because if you put any weight or if you take that rib off or you move that crane, this whole thing is going to capsize. So yeah, you do want an active stabilization system here. So I would definitely check out one of my videos on how to do that. Um, but besides that, yeah, really uh, beautiful creation. I really like it. I think it's really cool. Um, just a weight issue. Um, and just need to put more weight. And obviously the more weight you put, the more ballast you need or the more buoyancy you need in theory. Um, and we can obviously play with that a little more. Now it's a little bit too heavy on the left. So we can add a little more weight on the right hand side. Um, like that and see if that's going to help. Anyway, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this one. I think we can all see obviously just the issue with waiting uh, and getting that center of gravity to the center. Active stabilization is the right way to go on this one. Uh, and let me know in the comments again about the ballast tutorial, guys. Uh, let's go and move on to the next one. And the next submission we have is by Tommy Boto from Correct. Now, he or she says that the issue that you're having is that when they're using the crane on this helicopter, it's not, it doesn't stay still. It wants to move, it wants to move around a little bit. So that's not useful because obviously if you're using the crane, uh, you want it to stay still. Um, and the th second thing is that it also sometimes loses its balance and gets really weird and kind of just shakes all over the place. Um, so let's, let's jump in and let's see what's going on. So I can use the ladder here. Um, Nice looking, by the way, also. So let's go and get in here. We have ignition, altitude hold brakes, fuel pump, cab light, cycle light, navigation, strobe, pilot screen, co-pilot scene. 
Okay, let's get ignition. You got throttle. Let's get your throttle up. Radio we don't need. Nice. Everything looks good. Let's just get this engine turned over. Maybe I need full throttle. Cool. Okay, everything seems fine. I kind of have an idea already why it's moving quite a bit. Um, but let's just go and just bring it up in the air and let's kind of just see how it's working. Is there any brakes anywhere? Don't know. Uh, can I control it? Uh, looks like it. Can I turn it at all? There we go. Okay, so let's bring it out of the hangar. Wait. So that's up and down. And this is forward. Okay, so it's quite stiff on your controls, but that's fine. And let's just leave it to gyro itself. So yeah, it's moving forward. You can see that. It's definitely moving forward. Uh, it's also turning to the left a little bit. It's probably too much RPS. Okay. Yeah, it's turning to the left and to the right. It's also moving forward and backwards. Okay. I kind of have an idea. So you want to have your weight. So where you see this weight here, you want to have that directly underneath your rotor blades. Um, that way, obviously, it knows that that's the center of gravity, so it stays in the center. So let's just put some weight blocks here at the back here. Um, I'm not going to put too many. I'm just going to put a few there. I want to move that. I want to move that directly underneath there. So keep on putting some weights here. So that is probably too much. That is way too much. Okay, so let's get rid of some of those weights. That's still too much. Let's get rid of some more. And that is almost spot on. Is it in the center of that? It is good. The next thing you can do is instead of running your, um, instead of rubbing your actual main rotor blade and your rear rotor blade on the same RPS, I usually would separate that off. So for example, Let's see, do you have any gearboxes anywhere? Let's see. So, jet engine there, going down there. Where is your outputs? Outputs is, got, hmm. There, I'm just try and find where you've got your power coming out of your jet engine. So there, there gearbox up okay so it's going into this gearbox which is fine this is just time obviously you got a three to one ratio on this so what i would personally do is don't even split it off so i would go and take a, another connection let's see if i can try and cleanly do this so i would go here i would go and put a t piece um you just go and get a proper t piece here where is it? There we go. And put a T-piece here. And then what we're doing is we're kind of separating out the rear rotor blade from your main one. I'm just making sure I don't delete anything along the way. And let's go there. Actually, that's probably too much. So we can go to there. Cool. Okay, and we'll go and just bring that there. And then we're just gonna go and connect this all up. So it's nice and clean. So we're gonna stir, actually let's get an angle piece quickly and wherever my mouse is. Okay, there we go. And we'll put a angled piece here. And then we'll just put some straight pipes going along there. So straight and we'll get that connected. There we go. So that's on a different, that's now on a completely different RPS in comparison. So that shouldn't obviously get that much torque on it. Uh, is this? Neutral? It is. Okay, cool. Let's spawn that in. Let's just make see if that makes any difference. Okay, now it's too heavy in the back. That is an issue um, because now it's obviously just up in the air in the front. So that that obviously causes a little bit of an issue here. Um, I would rework this, to be honest. Just, you know, I kind of keep that into account that you need your center of gravity to be as close as possible to that rotor blade. That is a big thing. Because um, otherwise, yeah, it's always gonna go in the front there. Obviously, 
your gyro is trying is your gyro actually on it should be on uh, let's just double check so you got a constant on signal there and everything else is connected so we can remove some of this weight try and get it so it doesn't actually fall over uh, we could also put the weight in the center but that's also going to cause issues um, so yeah it's still trying to jump up there as you can see what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to go and try and take it off like it is right now and just prove to you guys that by adding that weight at the back it's made a big change if I can actually get onto this ladder there we go uh, so let's go and do that let's get your brakes off equal on okay let's get your ignition get throttle up you don't need anything else on I don't think as far as I remember I can get the screens on too. In a few seconds. When the engines kick in. Come on. There we go. And you can see your back rotor blade is different now. It's different RPS rotations in comparison to your main rotor blade. Um, so it's not getting as much power, which is good. Don't want that much power in your main rotor and your secondary and your tail rotor blade. Okay, so that should be fine. Let's just go and try and just wheel it a little bit forward. There we go. Cool. Now it's got itself. Let's go and bring it forward a bit. I don't know if I have brakes on or not, but possibly do. Let's just go and bring this. Up. There we go. Okay, don't have brakes on. Let's bring it up now. Okay, now it's shaking a bit. So this shaking you can fix by obviously just doing some tweaks to your... Okay, that's way too much throttle. Bring that down. Um, that shaking you can fix obviously by reducing your throttle quite a bit. And also by just changing your sensitivity that you have on your gyro. Um, so that tail rotor now is actually not doing too happily. It seems like it's just really going all over the place. Um... To see if we can get it to straighten out a bit so it's not moving forward anymore as you can see there it's rotating but it's not moving forward so the weight issue has fixed that but it is rotating left and right quite heavily um and that's just your tail rotor okay so what we can do is we can change pace a bit and instead of removing that gearbox i guess we can add another one on um thing is you shouldn't really have any you shouldn't really have anything going through that is your your connect where's your your connected to yours connected there hmm okay actually i'm not going to do that i'm going to undo that and i'm going to go to your your and let's put your sensitive way up on your your I just want to see if that makes any difference changing that your sensitivity because that could be why it was underreacting a bit so we'll get your ignition on throttle up brakes on oops no fuel pump and then let's get your ignition on let's just get that turned over and let's just see by changing that gyro if it makes any difference we've already fixed the weight issue with it going forwards and backwards so that's a good thing let's just go and fix your tail rotor so we've got it on let's get your screens on probably get your throttle down again to about 40 percent i don't see anything about your rps readout or anything like that anywhere here oh wait fuel yeah i would like to see something for your rps to be honest that's just my personal preference i like to to see what rps you have but once again just my preference just wait for this to load up to get the throttle up here try and get it to build its rps a little bit quicker there we go and let's drop it down now and let's move forward how's the tail rotor should be pretty good let's bring it forward again and we'll just bring it out in a few seconds yep we should have cleared let's bring it up Yeah, what? Okay, it needs a little more power. Okay, 
Okay, I'm just pitching it just to see if I can get it to take off. Might not have enough RPS just yet, so let's just try again. Come on. Why aren't your rotor blades turning uh, in the direction I want it to go in? I'm going to go a little more throttle. Come on, take off. Why doesn't it want to take off? Let's just give it more throttle. There we go. Okay, so it's still turning quite a lot at the rear. It's actually turning much more. So maybe it's too sensitive. It's the only thing I can think of. So it's too sensitive at the back because it's not—it's not a weight issue with your tail rotor. Okay, we've got way too much throttle now. Yeah, it's still turning left and right quite a bit more. Okay, let's go and let's see. I'm going to undo what I did with that. And let's go then. This is still on neutral. That's fine. And let's go to your yaw here. Let's go and bring the sensitivity down to about 30%. Everything else I'm happy with. Let's just go and spawn that in. See if that makes any difference whatsoever. Okay, let's get ignition, fuel pumps, throttle all the way up. Pilot screens on, that door closed. Come on, turn over. Get brakes off. Cool, we're up and running. This is changing that sensitivity to see if that helped the tail rotor at all. Otherwise, another way you could also do it is you can use your you can use an electric motor for your tail rotor. Um, it's still turning quite a bit. Okay, let's just go and decrease your throttle a little bit. Yeah, still turning quite a bit. A little better now, as you can see. Ever so slightly better. Just bring it out here. Let's imagine that we were just hovering over here. And I wanted to stop it right here. That's not moving forward again, but it is uh, ever so slightly turning left and right ever so slightly so you probably want to want to change that sensitivity also you have way too much power in that engine but then i guess you are lifting things so that's fair enough yeah that tail right is still not happy so we can actually test that theory out by getting rid of that and just getting a electric motor and let's go and connect up your your to that and get some electric to that cool and let's see if that's going to make any difference now so we can get that into positive yeah this is neutral fine yeah that's good Let's spawn that in now. Let's make sure, see if that makes any difference whatsoever. So we're now just using the electric engine to control that. If I can get in the seat now. Come on. And I can't get to the seat. Great. Yeah, let's bring it back into the workbench and let's spawn it in again and let's see if I can just quickly run over before it goes and flies away. Nope. Fantastic. Um, okay, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna get rid of those weight blocks because we know that that fixed the issue. But you need to move that rotor blade. I would move that rotor blade a little bit more forward. To be fair, 
That way you wouldn't have to put the white blocks. But let's get in it now. Let's just see if we can solve the issue that we have with your going left and right by just using that electric motor instead of the rear. Because then you can obviously play with your gearboxes and things, but I think your your engine's got way too much RPS for that poor little tail rotor, to be fair. That's why I took that gearbox away. I would probably even put some more gearboxes in and get it to face um, face the actual rotor blade itself. Uh, that's another way you could do it. Let's just see. So, ah, let's get the throttle down, down. Okay, up again, just so we can take off. Cool, let's bring it out. Let's try and climb a bit. We might need to give it a little bit more RPS. Also, I have no idea what RPS you're running those engines on or how you've got them set up. You know, that's something you would need to really diagnose and sit and kind of figure out and how that's working, but I'm still, still wanting to turn quite a bit to the left and right. No, it doesn't have enough power. So, yeah, more gearboxes for your engines. You need to tweak your engines a bit more. Yeah. I would say your whole issue is you got too much power in your engines. Uh, well, how are you controlling? What is this? Helicopter dash, helicopter alt, wind data, touchscreen, display, display, strength or strength. Is that for gearboxes? Or for what is controlling your throttle on that? Oh, wow. Okay. You've literally just got a, yeah, there's your issue there. You've got a throttle connected directly to your jet engine. Yeah. So PID, we'll get a PID to control it instead. So PID, let's go into it. Let's do a 0 0.05, oops. Let's do 0 0.05, 0 0.0001 and a, 0.5 go with that for now and we're going to connect that to your throttle we'll connect your throttle over here to your set point and let's do let's do a let's do 150 100 is your starting off rps sensitivity 20% what is your process variable is going to be your RPS of your engine oh, yes yeah let's use your jet combustion chamber active is always on cool that should actually fix your issue that you're having with the RPS and your jet engine and with that whole shaking and all that turning and all that kind of stuff so 100 cool Ignition, fuel pump, turn done. I would also like to get some kind of RPS readout now. Just for diagnosing purposes. That should turn over any second. Yep, there we go. And that should now keep it towards 100 RPS. You can even lower that. Like 70 RPS. And it keeps it nice and balanced. You have an even power output now. If this is getting way too much, we can lower that RPS down. And then we can obviously re undo all that stuff I did with your tail rotor. Now we'll probably fix it. Let's see how this is handling now. Oh, that's much better. Okay, it's still turning a bit. But look, that is much... It's now hovering nicely. It's not climbing up too much. Yeah, that's doing much better. It's getting a little bit shaky, so we can probably get your RPS down. Huh? You also need, probably need to look at tweaking that RP, that uh, pit because I just entered in some random numbers that I thought would probably work for that. Um, but yeah, not completely fixed. Um, as I said, I would set your jet engine up correctly. 
get that producing the right amount of power use a dial to check your rps uh, i have a tutorial on jet engines if you want to check that out and you want to tweak that jet engine properly and they'll go through all of it um then you could probably undo what i've done here and then your issue with it going forwards and backwards you just need to have some weight here at the back um, and you need your rotor blade to be as central as possible to that weight um, that's how i would fix that issue if you're still having a lot more issues with it being a little bit too sensitive or unsensitive you can change it using the gyro here so as it not really fixed right now because i'm not going to go into redoing his whole engine for him and reprogramming that and getting this whole helicopter set up it will take way too long um but yeah i think that's a great place to end this episode off with um we fixed quite a few creations this one as it needs a lot more work to it so i'm not going to go into too much detail about this um but yeah you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments uh did you enjoy this video what did you like about it uh, and what would you like to see in future videos uh and i hope you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining and informative as always and we'll see you in the next one